Good evening. Welcome to This Week in Review. Tonight's stories include The Virgil Volunteer Fire Department had a series of drills this past week. I had an interview with Mayor McDonald. The primary students and the junior high students held their sports days on Thursday. Registration for the Big Fish Contest was held on Wednesday and Thursday, and a whole lot more, so please stay tuned. John Taylor of the Fire Commissioner's Office was in town this past week performing a number of drills with the Burgio Volunteer Fire Department. We took our camera along to show you the different types of drills that were performed. Whenever you can, make sure the window's at your back. Always take the fire at the most advantage place. Now, in order to take this fire, which would we, we go? The west wire or the left wire? All right, both start from the edge of the fire and go across the left of the fire. All right? Now, when you get left of the sweeping, or right back to the feet. Now, watch how easy it goes up. Aim at the 45 degree angle, straight down, stand where you're at. Turn it upside down. Turn your fire extinguisher upside down. Squeeze your nozzle out. <laughs> Take the door off. Now you can do you can use the tip of the the, the rescue tool to open the lip right here to get at your hand. That's the, the lock mechanism. But you can use Use this tool here a lot quicker. How we did it? A lot quicker the tool. Where's our tool guy? Okay, Is that a little tool? Yeah. There you go, this one. This one's operated with your handle up here. Some of them got little levers. This one, you turn it this way, and the jaws will open. Hold it for a second now. And you turn it this way, keep going, and your jaws will close. Now the reason I tell you to, to stop because just keep pumping. It shows you what happens now when you go to change direction. Yeah. Keep going. Keep pumping. Feel that? You, you yeah. lose all your pressure. Yeah. Right and what happens is after three or four times the guy dropping to the ground, he gets kind of ticked off with you. So, okay, you might want to have to move it up to that spot right there. If you get tired, look at somebody else. Really good. Go okay. ahead. Yeah. Want to open the door? Here we go. Grab a little piece of metal. And you peel it back. Oh, she slipped down. Okay, yeah. Now, go. Okay, go. People have a tendency, some people show you to pop the other side. If you pop the other side, you gotta pop two hands. So you pop the door, the door knob, the door block. Pull. You know you gotta pop the door. Pull. Go.
to make sure that you don't saturate the fire. What that means is, if you put too much water in, you turn the steam back to water. What you're trying to do is generate steam. Make sure that the fire is in. Got any loose pieces of chrome that you can get off? If they don't fly off easily. Don't worry about them. They're on pretty sturdy. They won't come off with the saw. Then you cut off here. Make sure she clears. Now she might not clear. I don't think that blade's gonna clear. She might. Or she might clear. She might not. Come back here. Then mark a place with your axe where you want to cut. That's where we're gonna cut with the rest of the blade. Then we're going to put small holes across the top of it to grease it. So we cut off the two posts, cut off the brace, pull the hood back, and take people out of the seat. Speaking with Fire Protection Supervisor for the Western Region, John Taylor, why are you conducting these drills in Burgio today? Uh, these courses here are a mandate of the Fire Commissioner's Office uh, to train all fire departments, whether they be volunteer or paid. And uh, the reason for these conducting these courses is to keep the firefighters up to date on technology, techniques, and new equipment on the market. How often do you perform drills such as these with the fire departments? As, as a routine basis on the the Burgio area, we substitute every second year between Burgio and Ramia, and usually they're done yearly in the spring or the fall of the year when the weather is more conducive. How many different drills will the men be doing today? In the number of drills, the number in about 8 to 10, depending on uh, which ones they perform, from portable fire extinguishers, vehicle extrication, uh, foam, uh, live firefighting with uh, water hoses and liquid fires, ladder work, and self-contained breathing apparatus. Okay, you demonstrated the jaws of life today. Do you think Virgil Fire Department needs this apparatus? There's a, there's a definite need for heavy hydraulics, or jaws as they're commonly called, in, in certain areas, and Virgil being one of them, being that they're heavily isolated uh, from the main road and they have a large stretch of road that's not, that is basically unprotected by a fire department. Uh, there is a necessity for, for that type of heavy hydraulics in areas like Virgil. Okay, so where is, is the nearest set of Jaws left to Virgil. The next uh, set of heavy hydraulics would be uh, Steamville Airport would probably have a set. 
and the corner of the fire department would be the next nearest. So we're talking roughly anywhere from 200 to 220 kilometers away. How many sets of jobs are there in Newfoundland? Uh, not quite sure in Newfoundland itself. From the western region, which is our jurisdiction, from Gander West, there's about six sets covering uh, Gander to Port of Bass, southwest coast, all the way to the northern peninsula. Okay, Mr. Taylor, thanks for speaking with us. The last drill of the day was the self-contained breathing apparatus. The firemen were sent into a smoke-filled building to find a certain item. And when we said smoke filled, we meant smoke filled. It's great to see that the firemen, although they are volunteer, spent a complete day just doing drills to ensure our safety. <laughs> Although these drills were of a very serious nature, it was great to see the volunteer firefighters were able to have fun while learning some valuable material. I had an interview with Mayor McDonald this past week. Mayor McDonald, has Council had any word on when the Virgil plant should reopen? Well, Dave, up to this point in time, uh, I've been involved with the uh, Mayor's Alliance on uh, the deep sea fishery. And the last meeting we had in St. John's, I did have the opportunity to speak to uh, uh, Carl Sullivan of Seafreeze. He was present at one of our meetings, uh, along with Vic Youngs of FBI and uh, Bill Abbott, National Sea Products. Now, Sullivan uh, assured me that their intentions is to open the Virgil plant uh, November of this year or January of next year. Uh, they will open in November if the fish, the cod stocks are in the area, they uh, have their quotas, uh, remaining quotas for this year. When I had an interview with Mr. Barry, he said that he himself and Mr. Sullivan would be coming to Virgil. Do you know when they're planning on coming? Well, since that interview, I've uh, talked to uh, Paul Blades of Seafreeze. Uh, he told me the same thing. They're in, in the, the process of uh, putting together a uh, uh, proposal for Virgil in, in terms of, of uh, operating the Virgil plant. And uh, Mr. Sullivan, uh, two weeks ago, assured me the same thing. And, uh, uh, I'm not sure what date they're going to be in, but uh, their plans is to put together a proposal to operate the Virgil plant and come in and uh, meet with the, the people involved. Okay, you said you're involved in the Mayor's Alliance on Deep Sea, on deep sea Fishery. What uh, are this group trying to accomplish? Well, hey, there's, there's several things we're trying to uh, bring attention, I guess, to, and, and one is uh, the effects, uh, the downturn in the fishing industry has, has got on the communities such as Virgil and other communities involved. And this is uh, certainly drastic effects if, uh, if it continues. Uh, the first year, I guess, is not as great because people do have UIC to depend on, but after you pass a year, then it's certainly going to be uh, devastating. And we want to uh, put a human face on this, not only uh, because of the downturn in the fishing industry that uh, the companies are certain or the provinces are certain or the communities, it's the individual, uh, the person that has got a family to raise and he's the, the uh, Brito owner, that's the one who's uh, suffering the most. So we want to put a human face on this and that's what we've been uh, trying to do. And the other thing I guess is the offshore fishery is under a lot of pressure. Uh, there's groups and I hear I guess every day somebody on the radio will make the statement that the offshore trawlers should be done away with completely. Uh, this is certainly not uh, not going to solve the problem in terms of uh, small communities. Uh, you take, for example, Virgil alone. If we didn't have, have an offshore fishery, what uh, employment would we have or, or if we solely depended on the inshore? Uh, you probably would get a week or two a year and that's about it. So we're making sure that there's going to be offshore, offshore fishery in the future. Uh, up to this point in time, we met with uh, uh, the three big companies involved. Uh, we've also met with the uh, Minister of Fisheries, John Crosby. He assured us that as long as he's the Minister of Fisheries, there will be a balanced fishery, which means 
an inshore and an offshore. So we're uh, pretty pleased with that. Now we've uh, got meetings set up on the 30th of this month with uh, Clyde Wells and uh, the Premier and Walter Carter, the Provincial Minister of Fisheries, and along with Richard Casson, the President of the Fishermen's Union. So we want to make sure that all sides is, or all people involved is on side and uh, make sure there's a deep sea fishery in the future because there is a big lobby on it. And that's been going on for two years and, uh, and people I guess like uh, Kevin Martin and those type of people is, is pushing very strong and, uh, and we want to make sure that uh, the province and the federal government is aware that uh, the only way to maintain uh, a livelihood in those communities is to have an offshore fishery. How often does the Mayor's Alliance meet? Uh, well, we've been in existence now I guess for two months and uh, we basically meet once a month but uh, uh, during that uh, month period, there is a group that's uh, uh, on the phones getting information, sending out uh, facts and, uh, and having group meetings and this sort of thing. So uh, we do have another meeting now on the 30th of this month. Mayor McDonald, do you think the decision of five international judges to give St. Pierre and Mekong a 24-mile limit on the west side of the islands was a good decision? But well, Dave, uh, the decision by the... Uh, tribunal to uh, to settle the boundary dispute uh, in regards to Canada and France I think was uh, in uh, Canada's favor the decision was and uh, as I see it now I see uh, Superior is confined to a 24 mile uh, zone around the island which they're boxed in uh, a 10 and a half mile channel leading out to the 200 mile limit or 200 miles long uh, is certainly not the best area in the world for fishing. There's a, the scientific advice shown that uh, this channel is not uh, not a good place for migration of fish. And uh, it looks like that 90, 95 percent of the, the cat stocks or or uh, flounder and perch uh, stocks is in the Canadian zone right now. So uh, I believe uh, Canada came out on top on this one. And I certainly can sympathize with the people of St. Pierre and as well. Uh, it was not their choice, uh, and I guess this uh, dispute was caused by Metropolitan of France by sending over their big factory freezers and destroying the tree pierce area, and that's why uh, the dispute arose in the, in the first place. But uh, right now, St. Pierre Mechelon is left with a uh, 24 mile zone, and uh, it's through no fault of their own. So if I lived in St. Pierre Mechelon today, I know what I'd be doing. I'd be, uh, I'd be trying to separate from France and become a part of uh, Newfoundland and Canada because uh, those people was, uh, is certainly, I guess, uh, got to make a lot of you and there's, I understand there's two fish plants on the island with uh, seven trawlers and uh, it's certainly a bad decision for them but it's uh, a good decision for us. The only thing now we got to be careful over is the 1972 treaty which is open for negotiations and uh, Canada stays tough on that. Well. Uh, we're in good shape in the, the three PSO. Okay, I understand that you haven't had your uh, mayor's marriage on heart and stroke disease yet. No, uh, I was going to have it last weekend, and uh, I guess uh, we placed the plate sheet in the town office, which is the only place in town we have it. And uh, there is uh, some sponsors there on, on the sheet. I noticed it again uh, uh, yesterday, and. Uh, uh, I think it's something like fifty-five dollars uh, in donations have, uh, have come in. So uh, uh, we've got up to the twenty-sixth of this month to uh, get the money in. So uh, uh, we plan to keep the plate sheet over the town office for another week, and hopefully we'll collect more sponsors because it is a a good cause. We do have people in this community with art problems. Uh, people from time to time have uh, bypass surgery, which is connected to the heart and and people who uh, suffer severe stroke, so it is a good cause. So I like to uh, uh, keep the plate sheet in the town office for another week and see if we can pick up more sponsors. Uh, so hopefully next by well, next weekend we'll go for that walk. Okay, Mayor McDonald, thanks for speaking with us. Workers with Western Construction are scheduled to begin work on the streets around town tomorrow. A number of crews have been in this past week doing measurements, doing surveys, as well as marking areas for coverts, 
etc. in the roads around town that are to be paved. Also, this tractor-trailer load of culverts arrived around noon on Thursday. I tried contacting the supervisor for this project at Western's office several times throughout this past week. However, I was unable to locate him. The bricklayers have begun laying bricks at the new health care facility. When I visited the site on Friday afternoon, one of the ends of the building was almost completed with bricks. As well, the ground inside of the building was being leveled up for the cement floor. There's also some work still being done on the steel in the building. Registration for the fire department's annual Big Fish Contest was held on Wednesday and Thursday of this past week. The Burgio Volunteer Fire Department had all sorts of items donated again this year as prizes for their Big Fish Contest, including rods and reels, a salmon rod, a salmon reel, as well as various fishing oaks, fishing line, flies, a worm case, and a whole slew of other items. With the boating season now in full swing, it's a good time to remind you of boating safety. Please tune in after the news tonight for a short film provided by the RCMP on boating safety. Now over to Mayor McDonald with the Town Council Report. Good evening. Virgil Town Council Report. Council is still trying to obtain funding to extend the water line and far either to the Messrs. 8 area. Western Construction has received a contract for the paving at the Virgil Highway and also the paving of the streets around town. This work around town will start Monday morning. Council will have to close certain sections of the road for the contractors to carry out their work. Council apologizes for any inconvenience while construction is going on around town. This work is expected to be completed by August 1st. Council have been trying to achieve funding for air compressors for the fire department. To date, Council has been unsuccessful. The Small Zona Bridge project is on all at the present time. If London Can Limited don't complete the project, then the receivers will have to appoint some other contractor to complete the job. Council agreed they will not send any delegates to the Newfoundland and Labrador Federation of Municipalities Convention this year due to tough economical times. Mr. Aubrey Golding was in town and met with council regarding the new municipal plan. The action committee formed by council at its first meeting on May the 19th. That committee was formed to deal with the problems in the fishing industry concerning our town. Cleanup week in our town was a success and council has placed garbage containers around town again this year for 
residents of Bernsey to use. Council would like to t thank everyone who cleaned up their property during cleanup week. And most of all, Council would like to thank the Bears, elementary school students, teachers, parents, own school for getting involved in making our town a cleaner place to live. A letter was received from T.E. Furlong regarding the history of Virgil. Council agreed to send Mr. Furlong an information package concerning the history of our community. A letter was received regarding Canada's 125th anniversary of Confederation, which is this year, and the government of Canada encouraged everyone to get involved in certain activities. A number of letters were received from elementary school students regarding lettering around town. And I believe at the last council report I mentioned we did not have any anti-litter regulations, but it was my mistake we do. Those anti-litter regulations have been in effect for eight years, but they have not been in force. So council has decided to enforce the anti-litter regulations. A letter of support was written and sent to MHA Danny Dumas concerning plant quarters rather than company quarters. Council received an application from a resident of Virgin to start up a bed and breakfast business in the building known as the Staff House. This request was approved, subject to approval from other departments involved. All materials for the incinerator is on site, and this project is expected to be completed by the end of July. Council received an application from an individual necessary to construct a convenience store. This application had to be put on hold, pending information from the Department of Municipal and Provincial Affairs concerning zoning regulations. Council received an application from an individual necessary to construct a building supply store. This application had to be put on hold, pending information from the Department of Municipal and Provincial Affairs concerning zoning regulations. There has been a number of applications approved by the town of Virgil for individuals to construct hotel, motel, summer cottages, and for some reason those people are having problems with Ecola in regards to funding. On behalf of all those individuals, Council has written a letter to Ecola expressing Council's concerns over the delay in having applications approved and pointing out the need for such facilities in Virgil. Council received an application from the individual in Mrs. area to construct a heat by 12 sheet. His application was approved. Council also received an application from an individual of Arbor, the Harbor area to construct a 12 by 16 sheet. His application was approved. You all, you're all aware, I guess, of the Crown Life Participation Registration that took place in the community two weeks ago. And Ramya came out as winners. Uh, we had to fly the Ramya flag for a period of one week. But I guess we didn't really lose because we did receive a silver medal. And the Crown Light Participation uh, would like to congratulate the people of Virgil for being involved. Uh, and I guess I'll read what I have here to the citizens of your community on achieving the silver medal for their excellency efforts on Challenge Day. So Virgil did receive a silver, and I guess we are very pleased with that, and hopefully next year we will receive the gold. In closing, I received a letter from the Bank of Nova Scotia in Westville, and this is concerning the Plymouth Westray mine disaster and I uh, would like to read that out to you. Uh, it says, Dear Mayor McDonald, our branch is the depository for all funds received for the Plymouth Westray Minor Disaster Fund, and the staff at our branch wanted to tell you how impressed we are with the generosity of the people of Virgil and Ramia. There has not been a day since the funds were set up that we haven't received donations from your townspeople, and we just wanted to say thank you. And that's signed by the manager of the Bank of Nova Scotia in Westville, A. D. Mrs. A. D. McDonald.